I know everybody hates ads and YouTube already gives them to you, so I'll get through this as quickly as possible. I was just sponsored with W Energy Drink. W was formulated to give you focus and energy with no crashes or jitters. Their formula contains vitamins, amino acids, and nootropics to help you stay on and complete your tasks even whenever your ADHD is in full gear. They have a ton of super delicious flavors like their Galaxy Grenade here, which is my fruit blend that I've got, and they've got really awesome shakers that appear every once in a while and sometimes just go out. So you gotta go on there and check it out to see if you can find one. So if you think this sounds awesome and you're like, where could I go to get this profit? Well, I put a link down in the description to their website, w.gg, and if you use that link and put in the code profit of woe, so I'm gonna put it right here somewhere, I don't know, so it's gonna be somewhere, uh, during their checkout, you'll get an extra 10% off. So, uh, have a good day. Welcome to the realm of Etulia, a world just getting back on its feet after a cataclysmic event that destroyed one of its moons and sent it into an ice age for 200 years. It has been 10 years since the frosts receded back to the poles, and on this fateful night, at the dawning of the fifth era, the chosen ones who might save reality itself from utter destruction meet. Structure will come in later episodes, but for now, I will introduce the cast. As you know, I am Prophet, and I will be the Dungeon Master. Oddity will be playing Signal Rothbarn, a swan May dancer who is the crown princess of the Kingdom of Duskcrown. Pyron will be playing the Azamar warlock Udios, who has been sent to the Material Plane by his parents to complete a frustratingly vague task. D&D Dork will be playing an Azamar Cleric Ranger, Jinga, who along with his brother Udios has been sent to this plane to complete a task. They separated around five years ago to cover more ground and hopefully discover what they need to do sooner. Nita will be playing a Dark Elf Artificer and Wizard. Her name is Idre. She's the captain of the Kingsguard in Duskcrown, Cygnus personal tutor, and her godmother. And Lex will be playing Scott Whitehor, a Wood Elf Druid Rogue, the first mate of the Siren's Tail, and the boss of their helmsman, the Celestial Jenga. Tonight is the Princess's Cygna's 21st birthday, and Scott and his crew have been hired by the King to put on a play and celebration. Little did the King know, Scott had also been hired by someone else for an entirely different task. Now join me as they embark and set forth to face their destinies. You see a picturesque style city uh, framed by a castle leading up a cliff overlooking the ocean. Uh, the afternoon sun is falling gently down onto the city as it bumbles and bustles its way as it normally does. Um, it's a fair early August, later summer style day. Not too warm, not too cold, but it's, it's nice out. I'm gonna go through and do a little cap of what everybody is doing, and then we'll jump into whichever person seems to be the uh, most important at that time. I'll decide at that point. So, I'm starting with, um, Cigna? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of based off of Signet, which is the name for a baby swan. Okay. Really? I mean, that's, that's a nice yeah. little... Yeah, I had no idea. That's is a nice it? little uh, detail there. I thought it was a... Thank you. So, Signa. The afternoon sun shines through your open window as you rest your aching legs, lounging on a chair. Lessons were grueling today, and Edry was particularly hard on you, wrapping your ankles and wrists with a long branch that she used to correct your posture and landings. You rub a welt forming on your left calf. You sigh as you think that she could, she could go easier on you, seeing as she is an elf and is naturally more graceful. Your eyes sweep longingly over the city. Beyond the walls of the palace, since you were little, you have never been able to leave this castle. You know the grounds like the back of your hand because of it, though. But soon, tonight in fact, you will taste the air on the outside and start your own journey, the likes of which you have only read about. A large airship with two levitation crystals on either side of it slowly floats over the palace walls and sets gently down into the plaza. You notice a few people in exotic clothes exit the ship and are greeted by the castle guard. You recognize the crooked stature of one of your father's councilmen, Helvest, approaching them. After a short conversation, they part. A few of the guards stay behind while the rest abscond back to the castle. The people in exotic clothing pair off. More exit from the ship and start working on setting up a stage. One of the airship's sides folds open to allow for a backstage. Tonight, in celebration of your 21st birthday, your father employed a traveling play crew to put on its best rendition of 
the, the thorns on your rose. The hottest play of the season. You glance excitedly at the traveling pack hidden behind your nightstand. Yes, tonight, while the city is distracted, you will make your break for freedom. A rhythmic knocking on your door snaps you out of your daydream. We switch to Scott. Floating over the city of Dusk Crown, you lean up against a railing of the Siren's Tail. You're always a little nervous before a big job, and there would never be another job that would be as big. You chuckle to yourself, while the city is being distracted by the playfront, doing some dumb script, this rose has thorns or something, your group will be stealing into the castle to pilfer whatever you can get your hands on. But most importantly, the princess. You break into a full laughter. This rose has thorns. What an idiotic name. All roses have thorns. You suppose it's some poetic crap as you cover your mouth to stifle your laughter. By the time the curtain falls, you and your crew will be the richest men in the world. And the third of the bill has already been paid. But when you hand off that highborn brat to your employer, you'll be able to buy a keep on some island and retire for the rest of your life. You look over the castle as the tail glides over the walls. No more just sending a bag of silver back to your siblings to get them by for a few months. Once you have chests of gold and platinum, they will never want again, and you can all live happily until the end of your days. The ship powers down slowly as you go in to set down on the plaza. A small poof sound as the legs touch the cobblestone. Amazing job as always, Jenga. You have no clue where your helmsman came from about a year ago, but his finesse at the wheel is far and above your own. You see him jump down from above the cabin and saunter over to you. Tie in to Jenga. The last few years have been simple. Traveling the world was hard, but with your addition to the crew of the tale, it's become much more manageable. Thankfully, your dexterity has proved useful and made you point, at this point, irreplaceable as a part of the crew. For as long as you stay with them now, you have free board wherever they are headed and a share of the catch when you participate in their capers. The houses and people, smaller than toys at this height, flow underneath you as your eyes stay fixed on the spire of the palace. It will be a tight fit, setting down inside the walls, but you've made harder maneuvers in your sleep. You flip a few switches and pull the wheel hard to port to align yourself with the length of the castle, making sure to leave as much room as possible for the crowd on the starboard side once the stage has been set up. The engine crystals start winding down and you lose altitude as you clear the palace walls. You feel a familiar thud as the old rig sets down and you flip the rest of the toggles, powering down everything but the primary crystals so that the crew can use it to set up the, set up the stage and get out a pinch if needed. You run your fingers through, the hair, through your hair and sigh. Even after five years on your own, you're no closer to figuring out what it is you're actually supposed to be doing. Nevertheless, if this job goes off without a hitch, you'll be set up to get a private airship and go on your own way. You'll be able to follow up on every lead, be able to investigate every clue, and hopefully soon you will find a reason and purpose behind your trial. Putting your hands on the railing above the captain's cabin, you swing your legs over and land hardly without a sound on the deck. You catch the eye of the first mate and start making your way over to them. Cut to, I'm going to say, Udios? Udios, yeah. Udios, all right. Another promising lead, another dead end. You grumble into your mug as the sounds of the bar wash over you. Three ales deep and you hardly feel a thing. They must be watering it down for profit. The barkeep sets, an sets another in front of you as he walks around the bar to serve, the serve a table their food. You down the rest of the one in your hand and start in on your fourth. Five long years, and you still can't find a decent drink on this plane. Well, except for the weekend that you were locked in that nobers in a noble cellar, you smirk. You're surprised you were able to jimmy open the door and sneak past the guards. Once you were out in the woods, the night goes blank, and the next thing you remember, you're waking up naked in a creek with a dryad. While your clothes and gear hang from a nearby branch, you hear the barkeep waddle back around the bar and shout, Last call! Shaking your head in disbelief, you look out the window. The afternoon sun shines as much as it can through the grimy windows. Hold on, what for? It's not even sunset, you shout. Get your head out of your mug, son. There's a festival at the palace tonight. I'm taking me wife and little girl out to see their favorite play script, and we want to get some family time before heading into the gates. You blink, giving a blank stare for a moment before smirking to yourself. You lift your last mug to your lips as a thought crosses your mind. That sounds like fun. And if nothing else, you can ask the traveling crew if they've heard anything that would prove useful about your trial. And lastly, we cut to Edre. Ed Edre? Edri? Edre. Edre. Okay. 
Your boots click softly on the hard stone of the castle corridor. Today's lesson had been hard, but you need to steel yourself. You need to be a strict instructor or your protege might not be prepared when life finally comes knocking on her door. For the last 20 years, you have been faithfully protecting and watching her, guiding her every step ever since that fateful night she was cursed. What a cruel fate for a, such a sweet young girl, you think as you turn a corner. In your spare time, you have been researching previous cases of this curse and methods and theories about how to reverse it, if it is even possible. You know she probably doesn't like you much, but you vowed to the king your loyalty to serve as her advisor until the day she came into her throne, and hopefully for many years after that. An airship flies by the window you are passing, a siren's ornament carved into the front bow of it. This play will be a grand distraction for her. After dinner, she will be regaled with a wonderful tale of love and fate. She deserves a little excitement after working so hard. You smile behind your mask, thinking of the look on her face when she last saw a play. How, how the fireworks sparkled in her eyes as she looked up at them in awe. Your, her happiness gladdens you, as it would any godmother. You wave your hand to dismiss the two guards standing by her door as you approach. They bow in respect and march off in the opposite direction. You turn on your heel to face her chambers, draw in a breath, and knock tentatively. And with that, I think we will start with Idre coming into... Oh, uh, God. Give me a second. Sigma. 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 We all have weird yes. names. Yeah, except I, I will get it after a minute. <laughs> Everyone but Scott. You can Bye. call me E if it's better. I'm the only one that doesn't have a weird character name. It's fine. I'll, I'll get it. It'll just take me a minute. My lady? Yes, come in. Are you ready for today? Yes. I believe so. Well, we shouldn't keep your father waiting. He does hate waiting. Well, move along. What's taking you? Just mm. nervous at all. Nervous? About what? I mean, you know what father's like. Man barely says a word, it's really creepy. He's just a man set in his ways. Oh, just really creepy. With that, a guard walks around the door, knocks on the um, sill of the door, and says, "Madam, my lady, uh, your father is waiting for you in the in the drawing room. If you are ready to accompany me the, to him, I will uh, position myself behind her and have the guard be in front of her." Okay. Um, you walk probably forty paces down some stone corridors, go down a tight spiral staircase that she, you're, you're clearly on like one of the upper levels of the uh, castle and um, you enter this grand drawing room with high arch ceilings and, and giant uh, pillars with all sorts of finery wrapped around them uh, a very long banquet table mm -hmm. is centered in the middle of the room uh, set with cutlery and uh, seems like they're preparing for what is to be the grand feast for the evening the king is standing at the end of the table, accompanied by his wife, the queen, your mother, Signa. There you go. Now you got it. Yeah. I, I, like I said, it'll just take me a minute, but I, I will get them. There are, you know, a couple of guards, not too many. There's, it's, there's no real cause for uh, high security right now. There's not been any issues, and crime seems to be pretty pretty down after the uh, ever night that occurred years ago. But uh, your father, father sees you, and... Idre and uh, holds up his hand and beckons you towards him. Right. Oh, Your my Majesties. Goodness. And I give a slight bow. And I, and of course, I curtsy. Mother, father. Your father walks up to you. Um, do you have a name for him? Because if not, I have one picked out. Sure, go for it. Uh, okay. I had um, nothing. <laughs> I've been, I have been sick. I have been at a wedding. I have had no time to plan. You're quite all right. I tried to. I'm being honest, I didn't really bring in much of my guy's backstory either. That's yeah, it's fine. So, um, his name is uh, Gladys, not unlike Gladys or Gladius, like the sword. Um, yep, I figured. But Gladys. What about Glados from the that one he, game? He just, he just said yeah. Gladys. Is his wife's um, name Gladys though? No, her name is uh, Katria. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. That's creative. Gladys 
your father walks up to you and uh, puts his arm around your shoulder and says to you, Hello, dear daughter. I trust you've not been giving Idre any troubles in your lessons? Not that I know of or can think of. He looks quizzitively at you and then glances at Idre. Has she been giving you trouble in her lessons? I mean, not that I need to. You can't see it, but she's kind of giving like an eye roll, like for sure. Mm. Because she kind of gives like a slight nod. That, you know, so make sure that she doesn't notice that she's not nodding to the king. He chuckles kind of heartily, um, strokes his beard a little bit and says, Ah, well, tonight's not the night to correct your steps, so to speak, whenever it comes to your lessons. Tonight is a night of merriment, as you will hopefully love this present that I've gotten for you. I'm sure you've heard about it for now. We tried to keep it a secret, your mother and I, but word does travel around the castle. Oh? Also, oh, you've on, got don't, her. Don't keep, don't keep me waiting. You know I hate this. We've this seen that it all. play you've been reading, and we hired a traveling crew to put on a performance of it. They're very highly recommended. You didn't. It was, um, this rose has thorns, I believe? I put a different dust jacket on that so you wouldn't see what it was! Dre kind of looks over and whispers to him, like, the thorns on your rose. Oh, yes, yes, the, the thorns on your rose. It's supposed to be a, a lovely play, um, not quite my <laughs> style. You know I'm enjoying adventures and battle and whatnot, but it should be nice for you. Just blushing profusely like crap, I thought I hid that. <laughs> your mother speaks up and she says, come dear. Let's try on your new gown before the, the, uh, feast starts. All right. With that, you follow her out of the hall, and, um... I, I do follow. Uh, well, Gladys not... actually... Okay, I was gonna say, Gladys puts his hand on your shoulder as they, uh, leave, and he kind of lowers his tone a bit and says, Has she been causing trouble? <laughs> do I need to be worried? No, sir. I just have high standards, is all. But she has great potential. She would not be my daughter if she did not. I'll make sure to keep her on her toes. Be sure to keep an extra eye on her. She's been acting rather, shall we say, flighty the last few weeks now, and we won't want her missing her special performance. What kind of guard would I be if I wasn't watching over her? Kind of godmother. Your title, not mine. And uh, with that, we will jump to Scott and Jenga. So the airship has just landed in the in the plaza and you are about to exit the ship and uh, you see some guards approaching you followed by a uh, very crooked figure. He looks like an elf, but you can't quite tell. He's so bent. It look he's he looks old, but he doesn't look old. You know what I mean? He he has he's frail one of those He has a frail stature about him. But you, yeah, you see them approaching the uh, the airship, and you assume it, they're the welcoming party. Uh, okay. Uh, would one of us normally be the uh, person to welcome the welcoming party, or would it be someone else? Or would that well, be someone else? Helmsman. Scott is the first mate. Uh, okay. The captain's so usually the captain. drunk. Doesn't really deal with any of the day-to-day um, -day activities of the ship. Kind of just makes the decision. You guys do the do the uh capers on your own so mm -hmm. for the most part scott is the one that is making the decisions oh well, hello there you kind sir thank you for having us greetings welcome to dust crown the capital of dionith oh it's quite a lovely place is this your from the sky is this your first time visiting us mm, i would not say that now sir but I've never seen it from so high before. He nods kind of like, um, pensively almost and, and says, uh, I'm sure it is a splendid sight from the air. So, do we have the clearing we need to start, uh, setting up? Yes, uh, all authority is given to set up your stage, any props you need. You may speak to any of our guards if you need anybody to help with carpentry or anything that you might need for the play itself. We want this to be perfect for the birthday. Oh yes, the birthday of the princess. Oh, we all want that to go off without a hitch, don't we now? Kind of gives you a side eye, like, what well, was there? Was there kind of a second meaning to that, or you're not really sure? But he, he kind of gives you a side eye and then goes, "Yes, well, 
We haven't had any trouble for at least the last five years. Nothing major, at least, and we'd like to keep it that way. Well, believe me, sir, we're just a kind of trip that is looking forward to perform for your princess. I was instructed to ask that you've already been paid your sum. Have we been paid our sum? You were paid a sum from the king, and you were also paid your sum for the caper as well. Oh, yes, now I remember. Yes, we were definitely given the payment. No problem, I just, I wanted to confirm for our treasurer and so. Oh, understandable, sir. Now, if you don't mind, it's best we get started. Lot of problem to do. Well, I wish you all the luck in the world, and, um, as they say, break a leg. Oh, we wouldn't want to break no broken legs tonight. Looks kind of confused. I was sure that was the correct terminology, but uh, maybe it I need is, to... but it is, but don't listen to Sometimes they're not always needed when you're as practiced as us. A high confidence you you have there. It is quite good to see. Uh, we weren't recommended well, for nothing. That is true. So. Without any further ado, I will leave you to your devices. If you all need anything, please do not tarry and tell one of the guards. Will do, sir. He, I will. He takes a deep bow. It looks very laborious, like he he's struggling to keep standing while he does it. And then straightens himself as much as he can and shambles his way back into the castle. Why do I feel like his spine looks like a question mark? I was thinking more like a really bent, uh, coat hanger. That just looked like it hurt to bend over so far. Uh, he's probably used to it. Then now, get started. Don't go to bed now. And then oh. Scott's going to give the order uh, for everyone to start setting up. Okay, and what will you do in preparation for the heist? Is there anything specific um... you want to... You have a, uh... Bug out bag that you use for everyone, or is there uh, another couple uh, shipmates that you need to grab? Uh, I think mm. he would go and uh, have some members, maybe possibly go scope out things to see to see if uh, things are possible to go as smoothly as they can. Do you have any anybody preset for that? Uh, if not, I've got a few just uh, level one. Um, thief characters that I- well, I mean, I can also do it. I have a pretty good perception. I do not have any thieves ready, but I can do it myself. That is better. Either or, doesn't matter. And then he will- Scott will go out and, uh, investigate himself, in a way. Are you leaving Jenga in charge to oversee the, uh, setting up of the stage and all that stuff, then? Yes. I think he believes his- and is competent enough to handle that while he takes some time away for a bit. Okay, so go ahead and give me a stealth check then. If you're going to start scouting out, I'm assuming you're not going straight into the castle, you're going to like skirt around maybe? No, he's uh, just the courtyard area. Okay. Just, just see if there's any secret passageways or anything that would help uh, in the events of having to have a quicker getaway. That will be an 11. Mixed su success. Around about halfway uh, around the back of the uh, castle, you run into two or three guards that are look, look like they're patrolling in the opposite direction, and uh, they're kind of talking amongst themselves, and one of them walks up to you and goes, Wait, oh, what, what are you doing back here? Who are you? Oh, I was looking for some Guards, as I was told, if I needed help, I could ask any of you. Go ahead and roll me, uh, persuasion, sounds like. Or no, deception? Would it be deception or persuasion? Probably a deception, actually. I have a higher... Persuasion or... It, a if, higher... if persuasion is higher, if persuasion's higher for you, go ahead and do that. I have a higher deception, so I'm gonna do deception. Oh, okay, well then, yeah. Ooh, that was an at 20. Damn oh. it. <laughs> So, no, they they immediately look to each other and go, Yes, of course. Uh, what, what do you need, sir? Are you, You're from the, the play troupe, yes? Yes, from the play troupe. Hey, can you find me a master builder? I need to have the set look wonderful. And also a painter. Builder, a uh, painter. Um, well, we, uh, give us 
10, 15 minutes, we'll, we'll go and see if the uh, master uh, carpenter is in in right now. And we'll make sure to grab... He's, he's not the best painter, but he's the one we have and he's uh, our scribe. We hope that's enough. And they kind of, before uh, you have a chance to answer, they kind of turn and scurry back towards uh, the other side of the castle that you did not go to. Is there anything that he could see that might be useful for later or not? Go ahead and give me a perception check. Roll it 15 plus 7. You look around a little and you, uh, you you see, you know, normal courtyard stuff, some trees and shrubs and flowers and whatnot. Uh, but along the path, you notice that there's a bit of an ingress whenever the corner of the castle, like at the very end of the corner of the castle that you haven't been to, uh, down close to the floor of the, or close to the ground of the wall. Hmm. It looks like there's a, a dip there. Hmm. Uh... He's gonna make a mental event, mental note of that, uh, and if there's nothing other further to investigate, I think he will return back to the airship. I'm gonna say that took maybe 10 minutes around. Uh, Django, were you doing anything um, super um, important I would, in that time? Uh, I do have one question. It, this isn't our first caper, is it? No, you've done multiple capers. This is by far the biggest one, though. Do we have, like, uh, you know, sometimes in, like, cars of old drug dealers, they have, like, false, uh, walls and stuff in the car where you can, like, pop it out and shove drugs in? Mm hmm Do we have, like, does the airship have, like, false walling areas to, like, stuff people or things? Wow, thanks! <laughs> I'm gonna say, uh, I'm not gonna make you roll for it, and I'm not gonna roll for it. I'm gonna say probably not people, definitely, like, loot, though. So, and, and Thank most, you. most likely weapons as well. There's probably a couple of, um, panels that can pull out that have, you know, uh, a litany Sword. of spears, axes, swords, that kind of thing. And then another panel, most likely in the captain's cabin, that has a panel that pops out for... Uh, maybe a chest, a couple bags of gold, that kind of thing. But no, I don't think do any, we, uh... Do we have a person-sized barrel? I, I hate you. would say yes, but it's probably filled. Like, uh, I, I will do a roll for that one. Let me see if you have an empty barrel. Um, Thank you. I mean, there them... might be a barrel that has, like, rope in it that we could, uh, use in, like, the production of this play, you know? Well, most of the rope and stuff would be in, in not stored in barrels. The things in barrels there. would be, like... Water, food, mm. ration, that kind of stuff. Um, there is exactly one. <laughs> Bark. I'm going to move the barrel as like, cl how many how many exits exits off of the airship are there? Because I know there's the stage, but there's a is there like another way on and off without having to go on the stage? Um, the uh the ladder the ladder up to the deck cool i'm gonna put the i'm gonna move the uh barrel uh by the ladder just so once it once slash if we do complete this we could just if we knock her out we can chuck her in there and just roll the barrel down to the hole oh fuck you <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm going off the seat of my pants. I wasn't expecting to kidnap a person. Uh, well, I didn't expect to be thrown into a barrel, so... <laughs> Back to my question, though. Is there anything that you are that you did that was pressing? Uh, did you... Besides that, um... I guess I would just, like, help the uh, crew set up. Just so, like, you know... I, I honestly don't know what I would do besides that, really. Okay, so you're not... I can't not... think of anything... You're not um, placing anybody in any certain positions or anything like oh, that? Oh, yeah, I, I would probably, like, if we have, like, certain people, because I'm assuming not the entire, I'm assuming it's only, like, a portion of the crew that does the capers, right? Yes, so there, uh, the whole crew capacity is about 30 people. The people who okay. go in and do the capers are about eight. So you've got, okay. uh, about six people at your disposal to, uh, divvy out and give certain tasks that you can use right now okay and think of them I... all as just level one thieves they're not going to be uh, incredible at anything they do they're going to be pretty average but they can uh you know they'll have a uh, not advantage but they'll have you know some pluses to uh 
stealth, deception, that kind of stuff. Okay, if any one, if any of them are good at perception and like, just like keeping a lookout, I'd probably have them try to sneak to like some area where they can have like a good view of the courtyard area in case like people start following us and they can do like a like a bird sound type signal, you know, like you know, fake bird sound. Okay, um, there's one guy that you've been relying on pretty heavily in the last couple capers. His name's Gronch. <laughs> He's, uh, His name is what? Gronch. G-R-A-N-C-H. He is a half-orc. Uh, okay. everybody always makes fun of him for being the clumsiest of the thief group, but he's pretty adept at, uh, doing, uh like surveillance kind of stuff he's not the greatest whenever it comes to actually going out and like infiltrating but he's really good at you know uh spotting pe keeping people distracted if they need to be like that kind of stuff cool i'll send him to go do lookout and uh is he going up to the nest? crow's nest yeah that's what i was oh uh, yeah i think that's the most inconspicuous area like maybe i don't know how like how the stage setup would work when it's connected to a ship but uh Maybe that's like, I don't know if spotlights exist in this world, that we have a spotlight on a crow's nest, so it looks like he's just working the spotlight, but in actuality, he's being like a lookout Lord type Lord. guy. Well, there's definitely, um, with, with the ship, there's some accoutrement that comes with it, so you're gonna have, uh, about three magical spotlights that are, like, um, run by the generator crystals that you have. And they're, they just shine light, uh, the, they, they're powered with the light spell and they just shine straight light so you can maneuver those to pinpoint things and, and, you okay. know, whenever you're not doing the capers. But whenever you are doing plays and stuff, you can use them as, like, the stage lights. Yeah, I think he'd probably <laughs> be, like, up near wherever those would be, just so it doesn't look too suspicious, like, why is this random? Why is this specific pirate just, like, up here, like, what you doing, man? Why are you being yeah. suspicious? I got you. Uh, yeah, we can definitely say that there's one of those on the crow's nest. That would be a good place for it. Um, yeah. And uh, just have, like, the other... Did you have steps one, two, three, so there's four? Five more counting... No, five more counting you and... Uh, okay, five more. Uh, I guess have uh, whichever two are the sneakiest try to, like, go check other routes that, that Scott hasn't checked yet and keep the other three. Keep two on standby on the ship the cover if like someone asks where people are and have one to come with Gott and I. So I'm assuming Scott and I are the main people doing the kidnapping. <laughs> yes, you you two are. Yeah. Um the other person that you would normally take with you, uh if it is a three man job, would be yeah. uh Vin. He is a uh half elf. Yeah. He's really graceful and, and quiet and uh quite quite good with his hands, quite nimble. Cool. Yeah, that sounds fair. Have Vin stay close to me, have two be, two of them be, like, cover stories, and have other two scout. So, okay, so that took up that ten minutes time, uh... Yeah, like, me just, like, directing people where to go, what to do, what to yes. do if you get caught, where to keep your Got knife. It. So, um, Scott, you're gonna come, uh, back around, and you'll see, you know, uh, you'll see Jenga, you know, doing what his normal thing is, kind of, uh, portioning out the... Uh, crew to be in the best positions possible. So, the only thing that is currently still needing to be done that's not being done, especially with the play. The side of the crew that is for the play is actually, they, they're very used to just not getting any help from the uh, infiltration party, so they're kind of, they're just doing their own thing, getting everything started setting up. Um, you see those three guards that you ran into? They come back out of the castle. They have uh, a very short, plump man uh, and a, uh, a tall, uh, uh, wood elf following them, uh, and they, they come running up to you and they say, Ugh, we, we found them as quickly as we could, but here's our, uh, our scribe who can, who can paint f fairly well. And the plump man looks at him and g just kind of scowls, and, uh, and he says, and, and here is our master carpenter, or carpentress, and she kind of looks at her feet and then smiles at you. Scott will reach out a hand for the uh, carpentress and uh, kiss her hand and be like, Well, oh, thank you, my lady, for wanting to help us. 
We need some great help building the set now. You think you can do it? She blushes slightly. You see as you kiss her hand and she uh, looks up at you and says, uh, Yes, I I absolutely can. I'm, I'm so glad you trust in my abilities and I hope to perform as best as I can to make this play as lovely as it can be for our dear princess. My, my name is Edrix, by the way. Well, it's lovely to meet you. And the name is Scott, for you to remember now. Okay, so with that we will jump over to uh, Udius. Udius, you are uh, you are still at the bar. You just you just heard it was last call, and you um kind of finishing your last ale there that you have, and thinking about this uh upcoming festival you just heard about. Udius is gonna place his mug back on the bar table. You there, uh, barkeep? Where did you say this festival was? It's at the castle, son. It's uh. Can't believe you haven't heard of it. It's been all the talk of the town for the last two weeks. Castle, you say? Very well, then. I'll take mine and leave. And he's gonna head out of the tavern. You need to pay your bills, son. Uh, yes. Right, uh, mortal currency. He's gonna try to fish out a couple of coins to give him. Yeah, you just toss him a, a couple of copper, let's say three or four copper. Anything else, then? No, he just nods his head at you. Thank you. Right, and with that, he's gonna leave the tavern and start heading towards the castle. So you exit the tavern, uh, the castle is to your east, um, or no, sorry, to your west, on your left. Uh, it's uphill the whole way because the, uh, the castle is like at the top of this cliff, basically. Uh, look out, looking out over the sea. I'm and sorry, I'm excited. It's fine, I'm excited too. I was, I was very happy that this group wanted to do this. I'm, and I'm really thankful you guys, thank you so much. So the castle is up on your left. And, uh, you know, you, you're kind of on just, like, the main cobble street. Uh, you know, there's stores and, uh, you know, normal general things uh, around. You also see, you know, some peasants or uh, serfs kind of just beating out rugs or washing their clothes or whatever in the, in the street there. And there's also, you know, a couple stands, fruit, vegetables, that kind of thing. Nothing too interesting. He's gonna... Udios is gonna look up at where the castle is, and then look down at the scenery around him. <sighs> he's gonna reach one of his hands to touch the back of one of his shoulders. I miss my wings. And he's gonna slowly trudge his way through the town. You walk up, uh, through the, uh, in your appearance, very, very dirty streets. Just, they could use for the good scrubbing. Uh, it takes you around, you know, 25 minutes, 30 minutes maybe, to, uh, work your way through the crowd. It, it does seem to be a very busy day. Uh, like people are preparing and, and trying to make sure that they are able to get to the palace with enough time to catch the show. And uh, the sun is beginning to go down and you know that it's, uh, from what you heard from the barkeep, it's it's good, it's tonight. So you, you get up to the gates and the uh, portcullis is open and the bridge is down so you can, you could walk across the bridge, cross the moat and go straight to the gate there. Uh, there are two guards standing kind of at, at attention uh, on either side of it. He's going to head towards the gates. Uh, occasionally, he's glances around all the people around him, just baffled or just curious. Like random things, with like how they look, their uh, clothes, what they're doing. And he's just going to mutter to himself, what a strange culture these creatures have. So as you approach the gate, one of the um, guards holds up his hand and says, Oh there, you, uh, are you here for the festival then? Surprising I am, yes. Alright, I'll be needing to see your ticket. I beg your pardon. Your ticket, sir. There's only so much space to go around, we can't just be courting everybody in the entire city, you know? He just scowls a little bit at the guard and says, I'll have you know, I am not just anybody. Aye, and who are you then? Anyone of importance would have a ticket already. He'd be placing it in my hand. He's about to reach for his wand. But then he gets an idea. Oh yes, the uh, the tickets. I have so many uh, of these, uh, how should you say, uh, items for festivities. Would you mind showing me uh, what exactly this one is supposed to look like? Well, it looks like that right there, you see? And he points over to um, the other guard who is taking a ticket from uh, 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 what looks to be a noble try, uh, getting in. Uh, it's just a long, thin slip of uh, gold paper Kind of looks like the uh, golden ticket from uh, Willy Wonka. Is, can I see like any symbols or writing on it by any chance? Go ahead and give me a perception check. That's a seven. A mild failure. Okay, so you kind of can't really tell 
anything uh, particular, but you can see uh, like a black bar at the top and a black bar at the bottom and writing in between, but you really can't make out the, the differences between any of it. He's going to turn around and open one of his satchels. Oh, <laughs> of course, you mean that one. And he's going to cast, while he's turned around from the guards, he's going to cast Prestidigitation to make a copy or his best attempt at a copy of what the ticket looks like. Okay, oh yes, um, I have it right here. Since you don't know exactly what the ticket looks like, I'm gonna have you give me a pure luck roll. Okay, that's 14. Okay, so the, it, it, um, you get it pretty close and he looks at it and then he kind of looks over and he double takes at it and he goes, all right, that uh, must have been one of our uh, secondary scribes done that one. It's a little funky it is. I thought so as well. Now, uh, uh, if you'll excuse me. Head right in, sir. Just be sure to stay into the plaza. Don't go into the castle. Don't be snooping around. We don't want to catch you in any trouble now, here. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Uh, I would never dream of such a thing. And as he walks away, uh, quite briskly, he mutters, Don't tell me what to do. As you walk into the plaza, the very first thing you notice, someone you haven't seen in five years, it sounds. Jingo, are you... Uh, are you well, you're you're pretty occupied with your work. I'd say give me a perception check to see if you see Udius. Uh, 15 plus 6, that's 20 21. 21? Yeah, yep. thank you. Actually, so you, um, good lord. So you, uh, I'm, a, I'm a cleric. I got oh yeah, right. I'm wisdom. So you turn your head as you are, uh, you know, writing something down on a clipboard, and you turn your head over and you see your brother. Your brother that you have not seen for five years. Jinga's gonna set down whatever, like, I'm assuming he has- I, I'm just gonna say he has a clipboard because that feels appropriate. That's what I was assuming as well. Yeah, he just sets down Medieval the clipboard. Medieval fantasy airship clipboard. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantasy airship, it's branded, it's from Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> fantasy Costco. Yes. Uh, he it's got one of those gonna... nice little places to hold your pin, your, your yeah. quill. Yeah, he's gonna set that down. Excuse himself. How far away is his uh, brother? Twenty paces or so. Some some stragglers in between. People setting up stuff for the stage and stuff, but nothing really major blocking you. Okay. Uh, Jang is just gonna walk over. Udios? You son of a bitch! Don't talk about our mother that way. Oh yes, because you care about our mother. I care about everyone. <laughs> so you say. What are you doing here? I'm afraid I'm not quite sure about myself. I let mother and father guide me in all things I do. And you don't think I do? No. You'd rather waste the time. I'd rather find the answers I need than wander this planet aimlessly. I've had several leads, but researching... Nice. And how is that going? Travel is expensive. Okay. Not as well as I would have hoped, but travel and research is expensive. I have to make a living somehow. Ah oh, yeah, so you've uh, conspired with these mortals, it seems. Mortals aren't all bad, okay? I mean, said they were, brother. But really? Just, uh... I hope you enjoy your show tonight. Oh, there's a show? I had not known of this. Yes, there's a play. Do you, do you just not pay attention to anything, or are you just downing women, men, and alcohol left, right, and center? I pay attention to that, which is important. It's not my fault that nothing you seem to do makes the cut. I gotta say, this is not the dynamic I was picturing. <laughs> oh, when it comes to these two, this is this is usually the shit that happens. And I was like seeing an office reunion that was like loving embrace and oh my god, I haven't seen you in so long kind of thing. And uh, it's oh, just I'm for that grudging. Too, but then Jason, attitude, <laughs> Jason over here. <laughs> Oh yeah, sure, it's no, my when, fault. When, okay, maybe it is. Yeah, no, when it comes like to a, Jason, it's always gonna be like the whole... <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> it, was, it was like a cat greeting his owner after being gone for two weeks. Oh, you were gone? Yeah? Oh, okay. Oh, god, okay. So... <laughs> Yay! So I can deduce from this that he's not going to be integrated into the, the thieving group to help in your caper. He's just, he's solely on his own right now. You don't think, uh, Jeng uh, I almost called, I almost called him Jenga. I don't think Jenga's gonna do that. I don't think he's gonna 
integrate his brother just because like they already have everything planned out and there's not really there, there's not any space for error at the moment adding a wild card would be not good you know not good scott do you see this interaction uh you, you give me a perception check as well see see if you see this little tense terse uh conversation that happened just now so do i need to roll perception or insight no, uh, I'd just say a perception. You're not trying to deduce the uh, the tone of the conversation. I'm just seeing if you actually see the conversation. Uh, that is a 17 plus set, uh, 7, so 24. Okay, yeah, no, you, you, you see your first mate, or not first mate, sorry, you're the first mate. You see your helmsman walk over, um, greet this other, what seems to be very similar resemblance to him, Asimar, and uh, exchange a few short words and then kind of walk back, kind of shaking his head a little bit, walk back briskly and, and grab his clipboard back from the person he handed it off to. Hey, Helsman, what was that about? Apparently, my brother, who I haven't seen for several years, uh, was in town today, and he's a little uh, abrasive with people. Hmm. Even his own brother. And I wasn't expecting him to be here. You know he told me you had the brother? I don't tell a lot of people a lot of things. Now uh, tell me, your brother's not going to cause any issue for tonight. They will not have my plan being foiled. He should, he would... Uh, honestly, I assume he'll probably get drunk and flirt with whatever local youth he can get his hands on. Well... Get back to work. I will not have you slacking. I wouldn't dream of it. Alright, and um, with that we will uh, say that you all are going to finish setting up the stage, getting the props ready and whatnot for the uh, upcoming play. The sun is just now sinking over the horizon and it will soon be dusk and night. Um, we're going to cut back, cut back to Signa and uh, Idre. Um, Idre is uh, are you standing guard outside where or did you are you standing guard outside where they went or did you follow them in after you had your words with the king uh knowing that they wanted to have a little bit of privacy i would have stood outside the room so signa your mother um Katria, uh takes you into this nice formal looking room it's um you know 10 feet by 10 feet it's got uh dresses all lining the walls and uh, very nice heels and shoes and uh, all sorts of accessories that you could add to your uh, outfit. And um, she's currently lacing you up into a very, very choking corset. Mom, um, um do, mother, too tight. Can't breathe. Oh, it's got to be tight, dear. Pushes all the mincemeat to the top of the pie. Mom, you know... I don't have big boobs. The reason for it, love? I can't fill this out. It'll fill you out, that's the reason. She gets it all laced up and tightly knotted at the top, and it's uh, too far above your shoulder blades, you can't reach the the back, the top of it to undo it yourself. She says, there you go. Handmaid, come come here, please. And she beckons over uh, one of the uh, maids of the uh, court, and they bring you a choice of two dresses. One is a very long, flowing gown that is uh, a light green, uh, not quite lime, but not quite cyan, and it has uh, little jewels embedded into it, like almost like pinstripes, but much further placed apart, all the way down it. And the other one is a, a bit shorter, not too much, it's still below your knee, but it's not nearly as long as the other one. The other one had like almost a tail on it, but this one's a bit shorter, and it's a, a deep purple, and has uh, what seem to be like ruffles coming up from the left hip all the way up and around the chest to your right shoulder. Yeah, the purple one. You you point to that one, the handmaiden curtsies slightly and sets it on the stool and then goes to return the other one to the rack. And your mother picks up the dress and says, Ah, yes, it is a lovely choice. These two were made especially for you today, you know. And she uh, begins to undo the back of it to uh, help you into it. <laughs> To wear the corset. Absolutely, love. You know, appearances are everything. I do hope you have not been giving Idre too much trouble. Your father seemed like he was worried. She gets you all fitted up into it, um, and then picks like picks up your left hand in her hand, and on your middle finger is your family signet ring, 
uh, that you've had since you were old enough to put it on. Uh, about six years, seven years ago, maybe. And, uh, she looks longingly at it and goes, Ah, yes, I remember when I wore this beauty. We'll have to get something nice to capitalize on it. And she goes over to a rack that has uh, a lot of jewelry on it, um, it's a, a large, long case that goes across an entire tabletop, and she picks out silver, uh, circlet that has a, or circlet, I'm never sure how that was yeah. pronounced, but anyway, she picks out that, and it's got, um, three, uh, tourmalines, one in the middle and two slightly on either side, and she brings it back to you and places it gently on your head, and says, ah, perfect, it looks like you were, well, a princess, darling. That joke. A princess that cannot breathe is still a princess, dear. Yeah, a soon-to-be dead princess. Oh, you'll live. You should have seen the ones I had to wear years ago. They were much tighter and much higher waisted. So with that... <laughs> walking, just walking in the up the hill both ways thing. <laughs> it absolutely was that kind of remark. With that, though, you're, you're all dressed up and ready for uh, the feast and the performance. And you, um... Uh, take her hand and walk back into the uh, banquet hall where Idre has been uh, standing outside the door waiting on your return. I'll kind of give a glance at the princess. Nice dress. Thank you. I can't breathe. Maybe just suck it in. I'm not supposed to breathe if I suck it in. I'm gonna just kind of help her out without, you know, having uh, anyone notice. I want to try to just at least loosen the uh, the straps from the what do you call it the holes right it's a the it's corset, corset right mm. yeah so I kind of loosen it up for her just for some breathing air well, are you gonna like well I'm trying to think of how you could do that without anybody really noticing my initial instinct was to have you like maybe uh, cut one of the strands in the middle to help but that what that's I'll do up. is um I will kind of with the flourish, kind of press my hand, uh, like I'm pushing her forward to walk ahead of me, and I'll kind of uh, flick my fingers and have a little spark come out and kind of just burn one of the ties really quick. I'll, I'll say that there is a little bit of a peak coming out at the top of the dress, so you can spark it and uh, it burns just... Not enough for it to break, but just enough for it to loosen up maybe uh, yeah. a half an inch so she can suck in a nice deep breath. Better. Thank you. You walk back to the table where the banquet is, and the uh, servants are all starting to bring out the uh, very lavish uh, makings. They've got roast pork and, you know, like an entire suckling pig and like you, just the, the most ridiculous overcompensation that you could think of. <laughs> the people that live in disparity on uh, the inside of the city would have dreams about and never be able to afford even one item. And you have every single one of them here. And you all sit down. Uh, the king sits at the, the head of the table, obviously the queen by his side. Idre is on the other side. So the queen's on his left and the Idre is on his right. And Signa, are you going to sit beside your mother or are you going to sit beside Idre? For all intents of public purposes, I'd have to sit beside my mom. Okay, so you, you make your way over and you sit down beside your mother. And the king stands, raises his goblet as the uh, final dishes are brought out. You don't really recognize anyone besides Helvest, the, the crooked, bent councilman that your father has. Everyone else looks to be just like nobles and, and people visiting. They don't, they, they're not really, uh mainstays in the castle so you don't really recognize anybody else besides those four and you so people who were invited and are forced to give me presents but i don't know who the fuck they are yeah and um y the your father stands up and he raises his goblet and he goes to my beautiful daughter who is the light of my life and <sighs> with a tear in my eye i must say is becoming the most beautiful woman in the entire country what? and they all kind of here yeah. The, you know, take a take a drink from their goblets, and then the the feast starts. Uh, if she's gonna sit uh, by her mother, then I would stand uh, some feet behind her just to. So you're not going to sit down? No, no, I wouldn't sit down. No. Are you I... going to eat? Not, not at the moment. No. Okay. I don't take. I don't 
When I like when I'm on the clock, I'm on the clock. Gotcha. All just all business. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you'll stand behind her then. Um uh with your back kind of leaned up against one of the large pillars in the in the hall. And it while it's like suffocating, but I would be like behind her or watching her and kind of watching. I'd say the, the pillars are around um six to eight paces away from the table on either side. So you're you're not like you're not right right behind her, you know, you're just you're there. Everyone starts eating and, and congregating and, and uh, uh, talking and whatnot. And you can see uh, every once in a while a servant will come in and place a, a new parcel on this big pile that keeps growing ever larger. Uh, it's obviously birthday gifts. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. Um, so I'm, like not, I'm not messing with you. I mean, I can take a picture of it right now. I got a not 20 for 25. No, you're good. You, out of the corner of your eye, you see a uh, servant enter the banquet hall, but you don't recognize him. You have a pretty good stock on who all is in this castle day in and day out, being as it's where you've been for years now. And you don't really recognize him, and he walks up to somebody, uh, one of the other servants, whispers something in his ear, they both look at each other, and then walk back out. Is the king's guard by me? No, you currently are standing by yourself. The other king's guard are up by the king himself. Okay, so I would walk the closest king's guard and say we have two suspicious individuals in servants' gear, and I would direct them to where I saw them. Is that a telepathic message? Uh, it's it, it yeah it kind of like I whisper I talk like in a whisper. Which, it sounds like I whisper all the time because I'm in my mask. And they hear it, and they can message me back. Like, you can reply to this message. Okay, so, um, let me make a few quick rolls here. Okay, so, um, you whisper yeah. this message, and he doesn't reply, and mm -hmm. instead kind of stumbles forward on his spear. You can see something's not quite right with him either. It's not that you don't recognize him, you do. He's one of the people that stands guard by the king every day and night. But he seems off. Like, maybe he's drunk? Or it is a party day. Fuck, I told them not to day drink today. <laughs> oh yeah, I would have some serious disdain to the guards. They're not- they're on the clock, they gotta work. Um, <laughs> there's no drinking right now. <laughs> I will come behind the king and tell him, my lord, something- no, Mouthful of roast chicken. Yeah, yes, what, what, what is it? Something is not right. It takes a hard swallow. <sighs> what do you mean? Is is the play not ready? Are they are they not prepared? I need you to focus, please. I saw two suspicious individuals. I have not seen their faces before. I know all the faces in this castle. And one of the guards, you know how I feel. Well, he seems to be stumbling upon himself right now. I have Brown. a bad feeling. He turns around and he looks at the, the king's guard that is uh, kind of trying his best to stand up straight and not wobble. And he goes, oh yes, that Doss, he always, he always was quite a tippler. I'll have some words with him later. You know he is one of my old war friends. But in the meantime, take whoever you see fit and go follow up on what you've seen. Make sure that nothing is amiss. This, this night has to be perfect. I'll take his words and kind of like snap my fingers to the rest of the guards and point to two to watch the king, queen, and the princess, and motion to the others to follow me. So you'll have two other king's guard coming with you then. Okay. And you uh, walk briskly out into the hall. Uh, this whole interaction took maybe five minutes, I'd say. Well, maybe not that long. I'd say maybe three minutes with you whispering and then seeing the reaction that he had and then going to the king himself. Uh, so the uh, two individuals that you saw leaving the hall are no longer in the uh, antechamber. There's there's no one in this corridor, uh, there's torches lit and braziers, uh, and the sun is fully down now. It is it is night. You've got two ways to go. You've got left or right. The left way leads uh, up further into the castle, uh, back to the uh, princess, king, queen's chambers, and, you know, important, the council chamber and all that stuff. And the right way will lead you back to, back through the uh, uh, entrance hall and into the plaza. And it's currently daylight daylight outside? No, it is it is fully night now. Okay. I'm gonna go towards the plaza. 
I feel like if they're gonna leave, they're gonna try and blend in with the crowd. Okay, um, go ahead and give me a perception check as you round the corner to the entrance hall. No, not good. <laughs> Twelve. Okay, I mean, that's it's mixed success, so it's not, it's not bad. You, as you turn that corner and you start your way into the entrance hall to the castle, you see the doors are open, you know, uh, so that once the feast finishes, everybody can make their way out into the plaza. And there is a specific place that the king, queen, and, and princess will sit up in the balcony that overlooks the plaza. But there's also a door on the left that leads down into the cellar, into the dungeons, uh, down to the underground of the castle. And you notice that it's slightly ajar. It and it shouldn't be. It should be locked. I, I will go with the men down. But uh, you... I will. Oh, sorry. Before I go down, I will inform the guards outside what's happening and to go, you know, warn the others and be on high alert. I will make a couple rolls. So, actually, you don't see any guards posted. There's the the two that should be at the main gate are not there. You don't see any guards around the castle perimeter. Something's up, and it doesn't seem great. That's a big old clusterfuck right now. Okay. You think it's going to plan? <laughs> So you're heading uh, down into the cellar dungeons area? Okay. I will... The guards that came with me, I'm gonna tell them to double back and tell the rest of the guards that are with the king, and they will have to stand watch with them. And whoever other guards they come in contact with, they gotta spread the word. Like, sound a horn or something. Do we not have horns? Like a bell? Like ding ding ding? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you'll relay that message and uh, they'll they'll say, yes, madam, of course. And start trundling off their armor clanking as they walk back to the, uh, the grand hall. And you begin to make your way down into the, the cellar. With that, we're gonna cut back to Jenga and Scott. So you, Scott, one of your um, footmen for that you have in your troop that is not part of the play. He's part of the uh, the infiltration team. He approaches you and says, it's all going to plan, sir. We've got three guards. They're all tied up. And we've got them back and uh, locked up in the dungeon and gagged. And uh, we've got a, a wonderful entrance and exit into the castle. It's uh, a small ingress at the very back, uh, close to the right side. Uh, there's a great, we've, we were able to cut out two of the bars and uh, it's enough for people to slip in and out. And it, it's very, very low, low detection. So we can get slip in and out into the, the dungeons and uh, make our way up and through the castle that way. Good, 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 good. All right, then I, so I made sure that you won't get caught doing none of that. No one saw us, sir, I promise. Is anyone still watching? Make sure no one tries to investigate. If you're leave, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, take Jingle with us uh, and give him the layout of where we're going to be and where we're going to be headed to once the play actually starts. If you would like to come with us, unless you want to be present for the the, the, uh, the starting of the play, um, you, we we can just go ahead and start now. It's about it's about to end. There, the feast is about to end. The play's about to start. You see, the crowd is building, and it's it's becoming much more um, hectic in the, in the plaza. Just get to places now. I will do what is necessary to get everything prepared for the play. Yes, sir. And he uh he grabs a couple of the other guys, and they. They walk off back around to the other side of the castle. Mm -hmm. So you can see that they've they've been doing a great job. There aren't any guards posted at the entrance of the castle, and the uh, top wall the perimeter isn't um, isn't fully manned. You can see that there are a couple, but it seems quite thin uh, compared to what it was at least whenever you landed. Perfect. It's all going to plan now. If everything stays this way, we should have no issues. And uh, with that, he is going to go and. Uh, back on the ship and get changed to something more refinement and elegant for uh, presenting the play because usually he's the one that does the introduction gotcha um jenga what are you doing i think jenga would probably be like getting into some more night tiny clothes not like sleep clothes but like dark clothes Ninja. Yeah. yes if you, if you see his art he's bright yellow so not that not not a yellow outfit something like dark okay. so you go ahead and you guys get the uh all of your equipment and outfit ready for the upcoming yeah. um 
heist and uh quick question yes so the only thing we're the only thing we were we are being paid to get is the princess right but they did not specify that you could not steal anything else okay so i could steal all her birthday gifts well oh yeah oh <laughs> hey he put he put he he introduced the birthday gifts I like and, well, and Scott was definitely thinking about we're gonna nab everything we can get our hands on and still get away yeah. with. Uh, yeah, he wants everything that's possible to load up onto the ship to get away with. Yeah. All right. Um. Now with that, uh, we'll jump to. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure it. you'll probably join the party so you can have it back later. So. I was gonna donate it to poor children. <laughs> Oh, what a kind, benevolent princess. So I mean, yeah. this is shit for people I don't know. What do I care? What right? are you it's like, getting I'm not going to use it. Uh, now that you see that there are... The play's about to start, the spotlights are coming on, and, and there's people milling about and everything else. What, what are you been getting into, or getting into now? I think Udios is first going to look around at everything going on, and he's just going to scoff. This is what passes for festivities in this plane. And then he's going to uh, roll up his sleeves and touch the two marks on his arm that symbolize his connection to his uh, patron. I honor you, mother. I honor you, father. Guide me this night and let your will be done as I am your humble servant. And he's just going to look around for something he feels like he should be doing. Okay. Should I make a perception check to see what he sees? Yes. That's a nat one. Oh no. Oh lord. Okay, so, uh. Oops. You don't Dude. see anything. Of course. Again. It's all the perception checks, I swear. So you don't see anything, like, that seems to be calling to you for something you need to be doing or, or so, anywhere you need to be in particular. You just kind of, uh, you notice that there's a. a hey, there's a drinking stand right there. That guy cut me off at four. I'm gonna go get some of that ale. Yeah, I guess he'll make his way back over to the I don't know what it is, the bar stand, the drinking stand. Yeah, it's it's not the uh, it's not the same barkeep guy. It's like one of the castle employees, and he pours out a, a flagon and hands it to you. He says, first one's free, next refill, five copper." He's going to take it, and he's gonna he's gonna put a not quite fake smile, but uh, if he notices or pays attention, he'd know that he's not exactly excited. How very gracious of you, my good friend. It's not grace, sir, it's just, that's, that's the rule. First one's free for everyone, it's just, next one's five coppers. He's gonna turn from the barkeep and uh, head back to the festivities. He had lifts the mug up to his face and takes a smell of it. Ugh, you'd think I could find something well in this establishment. And he's gonna pour it into the nearest uh, plant. It's uh, just a shrub that's on the outskirts of the uh, crowd, and you just pour it in there, and as you, as you do that, you hear, <laughs> and all the light, the big spotlights just shine down onto the middle of the stage. And you see that other man that your brother was with earlier standing very gracefully and valiantly on, on the center of the stage. He takes a deep bow and says to the crowd, voice magically magnified, <laughs> Thank you for coming and gathering tonight on this splendid occasion. To honor the dear princess and us having a special performance of the thorns on your rose. So, sit back, enjoy the show. And there's a, a raucous uproar from the crowd. Everybody's clapping and cheering. And then it sort of quiets down as you make your way backstage. And the actors go on to perform what is essentially Romeo and Juliet in a different light. Are you grabbing Jenga and heading out? Your your uh, rest of your infiltration group is they're not there. There's one guy there who is waiting for you. And also, um, Jenga, are you gonna keep Gronch in the crow's nest? Is he going to be quote unquote working the light, keeping a spot out? Yeah. Uh, he'll be keeping a he'll be keeping a spot out being like lookout guy. Uh so I do think Scott, because he he's very particular with how he likes things to go, I think he would go for the princess himself alone. Just so he would could make sure everything probably a good idea. Right. Jenga will go and look for stuff to steal. Okay. Um but you are headed to the back of the castle where the your yeah. men found the ingress. Yeah. To our secret tunnel. Okay. So, 
Ta -da! Ta -da! Ta -da! Ta -da! That was great. Yeah. I've been doing reference to this song. song. <laughs> so, um, Somebody had to. So, you, uh, I need both of you to roll me stealth? Um, stealth checks, and I will roll for all of the, or the one rest, the one guy that's left. He rolled a 16, so he is fine. I got a 17 plus 7, so 24. Uh, that is a 15 plus 6. So, yeah, no, there's no issue. Nobody sees you, and you, you stealth your way. You skulk around the, the, uh, side of the palace, all the way, following the wall to the back. And you see the, uh, little dip that you had seen earlier, Scott, where you were stand- you'd sent those guys back. Mm. And you see it in full view now, and it is just like a, a little indent in the ground, uh, and there's a grate that has two of the bars shorn off, so that uh, you guys can slip in into the castle and, and get down into the dungeon. Are you staying together until you get to the main floor? Are you going to split off immediately? I think he would split off with the princess on his own. Okay, well I'm just gonna- I was just gonna say that there's really nothing in the dungeon besides the dungeon. So it's so you're saying there's no dragons in these dungeons? No, <laughs> this is a dragonless dungeon. There's some gagged and bound guards. Uh, they're hardly dragons. <laughs> They've been dragged in, though. Yeah, mm. no, that's a good one. <laughs> Play on words. Okay, okay. We don't want this joke to drag on. Okay. <laughs> so, I will get the phone book. <laughs> Come so on, that was good though. You all slip down into the, uh, into the, uh, dungeon, and it is, uh, you're in one of the last cells on the very end of the row. Uh, the door is open, you've, they assuming they have, uh, opened it beforehand to be able to get further into the castle and scout out a bit. So you just make your way up through the dungeons, and, uh, it leads you into, there's, there's, uh, a fort with a staircase leading down, and a staircase leading up. We have to go up, right? You Out of character. Don't know. Uh, I'm going to say. Wait, where have I hidden my stuff? Oh, it's behind your nightstand. Shit. You should have like, uh, you should have like tried to find a way to hide it under your dress. That's why you should have chosen the long one. It's behind her dresser <laughs> or her nightstand. Yeah. Okay. My sneaky snack. My sneaky sack is not with me. <laughs> But you, you did figure that you were going to have to do this. I was, uh, I would say that you would probably either say you needed to go to the bathroom or oh, something yeah. of the sort to, to kind of get away from your parents so you could try and slip the guards and get back in and get your pack. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I will, I will definitely be doing that very soon. Alright, so... Okay, like, so... Just, I'll just wait for that moment in, that inevitable moment that always happens where where my dad gets so bored that he's just like half in, like half awake, half asleep. He's kind of paying attention, but he's also kind of not. But he'll well, agree to anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know that it's not your your father's type of play. It's it's like a love story, so it's not. He's definitely m more of a battle and adventure and stuff uh, kind of entertainment guy. So. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, you're you're looking, uh, Scott and Jenga. You're looking at a uh, staircase leading up and a staircase leading down. I think we should go up. Down would most likely just get deeper into the dungeons. Agreed. Are you going to send anybody to go down, or is everybody going up? Uh, I will send. It's just us and the third guy whose name I forgot. No, right. there were the other two people were waiting for you in there. So now it's um, cool. three of you and you two. Okay. And then I will there's, send... gonna be, there's one on watch and uh, one, uh... I think Scott would tell one to go down and say, look for any... Look for... feels like, say, look for any treasure. If you find anything, take it, and we'll find you later. If you don't find anything, come back and find me. And just, we'll go back to the ship. Aye, sir. And he starts his way back, or starts his way down that staircase. As the rest of you head up, it is a spiral staircase. It was clearly like just an ingress in the uh, in the spiral to lead into the dungeon area. It leads up for uh, 20 paces or so, and then you're in a cellar proper with uh, casks of wine and you know cheeses, meats that have been preserved, that kind of stuff. It is definitely like a larder area, and the uh, there are stairs at the. It's a, a pro probably 30 feet long, uh, 10, 15 feet wide. And, uh, at the end of it, 
there is a staircase leading even further up, with a faint light coming down. Let's keep going. Take the line. Up, this is okay. Um, I'm going to need Scott, Jenga, and Edre or Idre to all roll perceptions for me. Okay. All right, Chippen. I rolled a seventeen. Okay, you got an eight, Jenga. Yep. Yeah. Two plus that six. That is a fifteen plus seventeen. I mean, not 15 plus 17, 15 plus 7. I was going to say, yeah. 15 plus 7. Scott, you see that uh, whenever you all are approaching the bottom of the staircase, that that light starts to get brighter. Like, very quickly, it's beginning to get brighter. Um, Jenga, you don't notice anything, but you do kind of stumble on your feet a little bit and uh, make some scuffle noises. And, Idre, you hear something coming down from the... Uh, down below as you open the door to the uh, larder. I'm going to step back and wait, like kind of uh, position myself behind something. And once I see someone that I am not familiar with, I will cast a spell. Okay. Scott, are you just continuing or did you... Are, are you using that knowledge that you saw the light get brighter, or are you just like, it? it's probably nothing? Uh, it's a little, uh, I think he'd be fed off by the light, as that was not something he probably was planning. I think he would whisper and say, hide. Let's get seen. Something is not right. Wait, so uh, are question. You I'm sorry, yes. just to uh, backtrack. Um, it's dark right now? Yes, it is fully night. Oh, I wouldn't bring my lamp. I can see very far into the darkness. It's not that you were bringing a lamp. It's that the uh, the staircase and the larder... The yeah, I was like, the staircase and the larder are unlit, and the door is op uh, was open slightly, so there was a little bit of light coming through from the entrance hall, and as you opened the door, the light got brighter. Gotcha. Understood. A uh, question. Yes. How far away is the door from me? Uh, you cannot see it at the bottom of the stairs. So it's- mm. would it be- that's more than 30 feet? I'd say it's probably 25 feet. It's just that the incline is so- is so steep that it- it blocks the door from being viewable from the bottom of the stairs. Oh, I don't need- I don't need line of sight. I was gonna cast, uh, Thaumaturgy. Uh, you manifest a minor wonder, assign of supernatural power within range, create one of the following effects. You instantly cause an unlocked door or window to fly open or slam shut. So I was gonna try to magically slam the door shut because of the range 30 feet and then hide. Uh, you could definitely do that. You could also just, uh, walk around the corners, or, of the room on either side of the staircase. Either or is a viable option. I'll do the second thing you said, the corner thing. Okay, so you, Scott, and your two men are going to be on either side of the staircase, just kind of waiting. Since I have my magical tinkering, I will have had all my tinkered items. I'm going to go into my pouch and take out my little beetle, and I'm going to kind of press my hands against its back. I'm going to open up the hatch quick. I'm going to let it fly in, and once it gets about 10 feet in, uh, it's going to a emit a noxious scent. Oh god. Uh, okay. Um, are you closing the door or keeping it open after you throw it in? Oh, I would close it. Okay. Uh, you don't have to make any rolls for that, right? Nope, not for my tinker tools. Uh, I did not think so. Part of my magical tinkering. Gotcha. So, um, <laughs> you go ahead and you, you, you do that. You have the, um, you press it, the back of it throw it in, it starts fluttering its way down, you in, you slam the door shut, and, um, Scott, uh, and Jenga, you start hearing, like, it sounds like a bug or something, and it's, it's coming down the staircase, and then all of a sudden, just this overwhelming smell just knocks you back, almost puts you on your butts, where you just have, you have no choice but to cover your noses. It's making your eyes sting, and you are having to fight to not run from this this odor and what I'm assuming is kind of like a mist of pestilent smell. Um, I'm gonna have you both give me constitution checks. That's not save. Uh, no, no saves. Yeah, save. Sorry. Yeah, same way, either way for me. Come on. That's a five. Oh, now my nose hurts. I was, I was holding my nose. Uh, 
I kid you not, I rolled an at 20. So with a five, Jenga, you are, it, it's straight up going to knock you on your butt. And you're, you're like not completely prone, but you're definitely, if somebody was to come running down at you, you would roll anything with disadvantage against it. And you're going to so have to. So basically poisoned. Yeah, I'll say while you're in the mist itself. Whenever, as soon as you get out of this range, this mist that you're in, it's, you won't have any problem. But for, for right now, yes. Cool. But with a, a nat 20, Scott, you are going to. You come prepared for everything, and you're going to take these two little pieces of cotton that you have in one of your pockets and just shove them right up your nose, and and be, you're fine. That's obviously obvious, like, someone's there trying to stop us. And Jenga, you, I was going to say, Jenga, you can't in fact speak. You're just going to be like, Oh my god, what the hell is that smell? We... I... I... We can't... We can't stay in... Oh god, this cloud much longer. God, this reeks. Oh, Christ. Uh, can uh, Scott? Is the bag in the room? Uh, from what I'm assuming, or from what yeah, she explained... Okay, I'm gonna say it's it's just now cresting the top of the stairs. It's up towards the very, very top of the arch, um, to the staircase, though, so it's not... Um, can Scott? You, you... Can Scott crush it? Uh, you can certainly try. Uh, do I need what do I need to roll? Uh, I would say a dexterity check, or actually, yeah, no, just give me a... Give me a straight attack. Uh, that will be a 16. Do you have stats for it? I don't for think the, it's... No, it's just, uh, it's just, you can create three items. One that, uh, produces light, one that can either emit odor or nonverbal sound, or and one that has, like, a visual effect and can say stuff. But it's definitely magic in nature, right? It's, yeah, it's magical tinkering. So, d taking into account that it's magical and such, uh, and that it's part of her specialized tool set, uh, a 16 is not going to hit this little tiny beetle thing that you see. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna swing up at it and you're gonna miss. Uh, it's just, it's just out of your reach. Like, you, you almost had it if you had been, you know, a split second quicker. Okay, well, I'm just gonna have him pick him up and throw it away at this brick. Um, actually, as, well, as you go to attack it and, and try and crush it, it's gonna flitter further into the room, go f back towards the uh, other entrance to the larder. So you'd have to chase it back. But actually, as it goes back that way, you can kind of feel the mist and the smell receding. Not really like completely, but it you can feel as it gets further in, if it keeps going, it, you'll be out of its range. All right, well, I think he's going to tell the group to retreat and we'll find another way out. Okay, yeah, um, because at this point, Hey, I'm not dealing with a fight, so no. Okay, so <laughs> you're going find another okay. way to the princess. So you're going back out the dungeon, back out the uh, grating, mm -hmm. and back into the courtyard. And then you've got really two options at that point, which is to go through the main gate into the entrance hall, or try to scale to the second story and get in through one of the windows. Uh, I think the scaling thing. I think he'll have the other group, well, be, uh, Scott himself, leaving the other ones behind, telling them to deal with that the best they could, but he go off on his own. If Scott's leaving, but the other, the Jenga and the thieves are still in the dungeon, or? Yes. Okay, so Jenga, you're still in the dungeon? Yeah. I think, uh, Jenga's gonna use Thalmaturgy to just, like, open the door from a distance to see what happens once the door opens, you know? Okay, so you use Thalmaturgy, and you open that door, and Idre, you, after a few seconds of, um, were you standing there holding the door, or did you back off from it? No, no, I backed off. I was gonna do a spell, but my, my, my kicker was not to have the door open, I wanted to see someone, and it wasn't gonna be an attack spell. Okay, so you are backed off from the door, and after, you know, 40 seconds or so of your beetle being in there, the door just bangs, uh, swings open on its hinges, and smacks into the wall on the other side. Okay, so that, you know, is a good indicator for me that something has gone wrong, but I'm gonna still stay. But I'm gonna send out my other... Because I got three. My other... Magical tinkering. What is it? Like, those old-timey horns, like, bull horns? But, like, not... Like, they look like Air a horns? cone. They look like a cone with, like, a little handle on it. So, like, like you can project your voice. I mean, I don't think uh, you would be angry. I think you would be looking for. Megaphone? Like a megaphone, right? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Like an old-timey megaphone. Uh, it's got a propeller on it. It's small. They're all small. Uh, and it's just pretty much... I'm just gonna send it out where... To the direction that I came from. Have it slowly go out into that direction. And it's just going to... Because I can use 25 words. Uh, I'm just gonna say... Uh, intruder alert really loud. Are you are you sending it out into the plaza? Are you sending it up into the balcony? Are you sending uh, it down... I'm sending it up to where I was with the, like, the banquet hall or whatever, wherever I was with the king and the queen and the princess. Well, you know they would no longer be there. You you know that the, the play has started, they will be up in the balcony now. Oh, that must have been when I was freaking out. Uh, so I would send it to the balcony. Okay, so you Question. send your little thing. Okay, go ahead. Can these things move on their own usually, or what? I don't know. The last time, last two times I did it, it was labor. You create them. That you have to follow along. Uh, it can only have the three magical components, each one, but it doesn't say how they look. You just kind of choose how they look. Oh, I, just, I, did, I, I was just curious. I didn't know if they moved or not. I guess it's just for a flavor thing. Um, If you want me to retcon it, DM, I can. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm just curious. It's it's fine. Um, I also did want to say right off the bat, though, that uh, while that brought, got brought up, I'm not a really huge proprietor of components and stuff. So I, I don't worry about having to have components to cast your spells. Just... We live in a magical world. I don't feel like you you need to have items to in order to cast your spells, unless you're like. Doesn't an arcane focus like override material components? Yeah. It overrides all except for ones that have a gold value. Okay, so like, like revivify. The, yeah, like diamonds for revivify. The fifty di- fifty GP diamond for chromatic orb stuff like that. Okay, all right. Yeah, no. Uh, we'll take that into account later. But for, yeah, okay. That. Uh, something that I didn't know that I'd do now. That's perfect. It's, it's a little different. It's called my Artificer's Infusions. You have invented numerous magical infusions that can rapidly create magic items. You send that up to the balcony and, you know, you shout, Intruder Alert! Uh, and at that... Hold on. Give me one roll. Oh. Okay, so at that moment, is it a thing that persists? Or is it just... It says... Does create static visual effects if I want, including up to twenty-five words of text. So you, what you're saying is you could say you could say it multiple times, and it'll it'll say it multiple times. Yeah. Did you okay. say words of text? Is that the visual one or is that the audio one? So it's together. It can create static visual effects, including up to twenty-five words. So yeah, no, you 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 send your little thing up, your little uh, megaphone there. It goes up to the balcony and it shouts intruder alert. Uh, how many times are you gonna say it? Once, five. Ten? We'll say five times, that's it. Okay, the first time that it yells it, it's drowned out by cannon fire on the uh, on the stage of the play. The second time it yells it, it the it alerts the king's guard and certainly the king and queen uh, that there is somebody in the castle. While that has happened, uh, we're going to backtrack in the timeline in just a little bit. I'd say uh, three minutes or so. Jeng- or not Jenga, uh, Cigna. You are on the balcony watching this play with your father. As you suspected, it hardly takes him two minutes to get absolutely bored with this play. It's so lovey-dovey and so just all about the the fates and uh, unrequited love that between a peasant and a noble, and it, it's just it is not his flavor. And so you're like, if any time to do it, now would probably be the time. I need to step out for a moment. Is that all right? He lo- he looks over. Uh huh. Um. Oh yeah. And yawns really big and goes, "Of course, darling. Just be sure to make it back before your favorite part." Will do. I just like I I try so hard not to just get up and book it. <laughs> so you slowly stand up and make your way over. You notice that the guard that would normally just accompany you and walk with you is the one that uh was quite drunk at the feast and he is sleeping on his spear propped himself up against the wall (laughs) and so you make your way back into the castle without any supervision and uh are you making you're making your way back to your room i assume yeah i i actually have taken off my shoes at this point because fuck these shoes but you're leaving on the corset then huh (laughs) i I know, no, I know, no time for it. Not yet, anyway. 
I am waiting until I have my sneaky sack and my dagger, and then I'll cut this fucking thing off. Gotcha. Okay, so you make your way back up to your room. There is basically, there's nobody in the castle. Everybody's outside, everybody's in the courtyard, on the walls, you know, whatnot. So uh, it's completely deserted. It's very easy to get back to your room. You get back, you grab your traveling pack, um, and you had uh, some commoner clothes stashed away, you know, just like a regular tunic, pants, cloak style thing, uh, so that you could try and get out of this finery that you're in so you could blend in more. And you'll go ahead and do that. That'll, you know, that'll take just, you know, a couple minutes. And, yeah, uh, and, and of course I cut the corset off and I cut the dress off and like, it, it's gonna end up looking like that part in Brave with the with the shredded dress and the king comes in he assumes that a bear has mauled his wife it's gonna look like that so um while you do that you get it off uh and you are starting to put on your pants your your tunic your cloak and as you're pulling your cloak over your head and grabbing your traveling pack uh you hear pretty faintly you hear intruder alert wow i certainly got away from that at an opportune time with that, though, you know that there's going to be a swarming of the guards all over the place, especially now that you are not where you're supposed to be. They're going to be combing this castle looking for you, and you're going to have to use whatever you can to try and get out undetected. I'm a swan. Well, they're, they're, the royal family and the immediate guards and stuff are quite aware of, of that curse. So oh, no. if, if, they came if they came across the swan, they'd immediately be like, yep, found her. Scoop her up. <laughs> but you could fly away. The thing. Honk honk. I'd be um, an aggressive. I'd be an aggressive swan. Question: Would Scott be aware of what the princess looked like? You saw a portrait of her. Okay. Yeah. the The employer who hired you through somebody else, because he did not hire you personally. You've never met this guy. He hired you through a secondary mean. They also brought you a portrait of what she looks like, so that you know who you're going for. All right. Just making sure. Um. As that happens, and as you. Idre, as you do that intruder alert signal, Scott, go ahead and give me a dexterity check. You're going to try and scale this castle wall, so so you're going to have to... I'm going to say, uh... Mm, it's cobble, so it's like, you know, there's handholds and stuff, but I'm going to get... Uh, it's going to be a DC 12. Uh, this will be 13. Okay, yeah, no, you, you were able to Hold on, uh, it's it's not too bad. You, you've done this kind of thing before, so you're able to, to shimmy your way up. You get to that second story landing, uh, or not landing, but window. Are you gonna keep trying to go up further, or are you going to enter that way and then try and make your way in through there? Uh, is there any chance that he would have known the blueprint of the castle? Uh, yeah. no. Um, I'm gonna say he's going to try to keep going up. Right, so as you get further up, the stones aren't going to be quite as sticking out. They're going to be uh, more uniformly in the wall. So I'm going to say this time, you're going to give me another de uh, another dexterity check, and it's going to be a DC 15 this time. That will be a 19. Okay, so you, uh, yeah, you, you keep going. Uh, it does get a little bit harder, but like I said, you've done this kind of thing, and you're quite used to this. So you... Uh, do that crazy thing that rock climbers do where they use like just the very tips of their fingers to like propel yourself up further when there's gaps that you can't quite reach to and um, you're able to make your way to the, the next story up. Uh, same question. Are you heading in? Or are, you, are you going further up? There's only two more stories Can after this. Can he keep his head in? Yes. Uh, inside is just a, a cobblestone hallway uh, leading left and right torches on the walls no no immediate guards or i mean there's some there's a door uh in the far like not on the wall with the window obviously because that's a wall but like on the other side of the hallway there's a door uh further down to your right uh is there any chance he's on he's not on the same level as the balcony anymore right no that would have been the, the level below you i think he's gonna climb in so you climb in and you like i said you see you know left and right on the right, there is a door on the inside uh, wall, and then it turns a corner after the door and goes left. I think he's going to knock on the door and see what happens. Uh, you knock on the door, there is no immediate response. The door unlocked? Door is locked. Okay. He's going to... That is a good question for me to ask, though. Um, Oddity, did you lock your door when you went in? Oh, fuck. I didn't think I'd have to. So, no. Yeah, okay. 
So the door is not locked, or it is locked? Her door is not okay. locked, but the door that you checked is locked. Um, okay, I think he's going to... I figured I'd be in and out of there! I'm thinking he's going to continue upwards into the castle. Okay. Onward. So you uh, keep going along that hallway, you turn the left at that corner, and uh, sure enough, it does lead to a staircase that goes further up. When you get to this staircase, uh, when you get to the top of it, there is a quick succession of a door on the left, a door on the right, and then another door on the left. And the door on the right shouldn't, it seems like it shouldn't be there. Like, that's where the castle wall is. So it, that's, that should be like open air, you thought. He's gonna check the door. What are you checking? Uh, the door that looks strangely placed. Okay, so you check that door, it opens. As you swing it open, you see a person with a very striking resemblance to a portrait that you saw not long ago, quickly trying to shove a traveling cloak over her head, and as she gets that over her head and grabs a, a pack that is on the ground, you hear through the window, INTRUDER ALERT! That is not good. He's going to... He is a gentleman who's going to like, Oh, you're all right, my lady. Oh, I'm sorry. Who are you? Well, I'm a nobleman, and, uh, I was with the people of Earth with the princess at once, and, uh, I think that's you. Well, what if they send someone who's never met me before in order to find me? That's not like my father at all. If anything, he would have sent my tutor. Well, it seems like your tinker is nowhere to be found. But I will tell you this, what to get out of this castle? Oh, I am getting out of this castle, but I'm not going anywhere with you. Hmm. And why is that? Obviously you're vagrant. He's gonna cast Charm Person. Oh fuck. Oh fuck! So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Sucker! Duh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and- oh wait, he gets advantage? No, she has advantage. Oh, you have advantage against the save. Okay, go ahead and uh, roll me the save then. I'm actually sort of hoping this doesn't work just to see what happens, but at the same time, I'm like, fuck no. If that was the ghost, that would be really Stockholm Syndrome because he <laughs> Honestly, I want to see where this goes. I did get a 19, like a flat 19 and a flat 5, but just for fun, I'm gonna take the 5. Okay, uh, it's certainly your prerogative to take it as a disadvantage. So, you feel this, it just immense alluring nature come over you and you're like, I want to go with you. Like, this person is great and they know what needs to be done. And I want to know what needs to be done too, so I am going with them. Uh, and because of that, he's going to be like, I promise, if you come with me, nothing's going to happen to you. Be safe, and you'll be able to get away and not be no princess anymore. That's all I've ever wanted. I've always hated it here. Well? No? Never seen fair. Imagine being locked up in a castle. It's never been easy. We must make haste as I don't want to have any uh, issues. With that, he holds out his hand in a very, like, princely way. She takes it. And he swis whisks her away out of the room. With that, we're going to jump back to Udios. You're standing there enjoying the play. Not really, but you're trying to. It's, it's quite underwhelming, to say the least. Um, this play group, although apparently they're highly recommended, seem to be rather unrehearsed whenever it comes to the actual source material, <laughs> as you have read this. So, and this is, this is why Satan tried to hide the fact that she was reading this, because she knew it was shit. No, I, I mean, like, you like the play, and the play is well written, it's just the people who are performing the play aren't doing a great rendition of it. Ah. Uh. You have been watching this play a little bit, not really, kind of just moseying, also kind of trying to, like, you know, suss out if you can find a, a hot young thing to follow you out of the castle whenever all this fluffery is over with, and during one of the middle acts you hear f coming from the balcony at the uh, a floor up on the castle you hear, INTRUDER ALERT! Would he know how to get to the balcony? Not through the castle, for sure. You could definitely try and scale the thing, but at that point you'd be- it would seem like you were the intruder, coming up on the king and queen with all their king's guard around him, right after that happened? <laughs> no, Udio should totally do that. I guess he's just gonna try to make his way through the castle and just try. So you're going to enter through the uh, front gate, yes? Yeah, Okay. if that's Idre, the most direct ahead. path. It is. Um, Idre, go ahead and give me a perception check. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, so you are pretty focused in on these people that are obviously down in the larder right now, and you don't notice this person walk in the front door. Um, are you going to, uh, um, 
Udios, are you going to approach this, uh, what looks like a plague doctor and say something to her? Or are you going to try and skirt around her and go up the stairs? I think Udios is going to try to, because immediately upon seeing a plague doctor looking person and hearing there's an intruder, he's going to try to spy on them. I think he's going to like try to hide or like just barely stay out of her sight. Okay, go ahead and give me a stealth roll then. That is a 16. Yeah, you're able to find some, like, you know, large decorative jars or pots or something and, uh, make your way around them and, like, kind of crouch down and, uh, still have line of sight on her and also be, like, out of, out of, uh, you're behind her, so it's, it's easy for you to kind of stay out of her view. Jenga, you hear this intruder alert, but it's so faint. You actually, well, I already tipped my hand, so I can't have you do a roll. But, um, so yeah, you hear this intruder alert and you, you're like, crap. Uh, okay. So you know that Scott has gone up and out and you guys are down here and you also realize that you have a third guy that should be with you who is unaccounted for. He hasn't came back yet? He did not come back from going down those stairs. I'll signal for the other two to get back to the, the thing, to the the airport, the ship. airplane thingy, uh, and then I'll go down to go try to find the third. So you start making your way down into this uh, spiraling staircase down, and it uh, becomes immediately apparent to you on entering the uh, next room that this is a crypt. Seems like the crypt for the royal family at that, as your guy who has been oblivious to whatever has been going on upstairs, is currently, you know, trying to force open the third coffin that he has uh, been at. He's stealing, you know, bracelets and rings and, and crowns and gold teeth and all that stuff. Are you thaumaturgy to open a coffin? I know it's not a door, but it's kind of a door. Are you going to open the one that he's trying to open, or are you going to open a different one? Open the one he's trying to open. <laughs> So he's like pushing on it, really laboring. It's obviously taking him a minute to get these other two open. And um, as he's pushing on it, it instantly just kind of like flies off. Uh, it's this big piece. Of, well, it's this big piece of like granite slab, and it just like crashes to the ground. And he turns around and goes, "What was that for? I almost had it." All right, gonna grab that. We need to get out of here. Look as if we're we were part of the performance this entire time. There's been an alarm going on. Let's go. Oh shit! All right, I'll be right behind you. And uh, when he says that, yes. I'm going to do a little uh, liberty right here. Because you have Signa Charm Person, she's going to be using every piece of knowledge that she has about the castle to help you guys get out. She has led you into a secret area that was behind a tapestry that Believe leads it. down three flights of stairs. And when she gets to the bottom, she pulls on a wall sconce and uh, the door, uh, a door opens up out of the cobble. And as he says, all right, I'll be right behind you, a door opens up in the crypt and Scott and some, some woman you don't know walks in. Do I see, what, well, you said Scott and some woman? Yes. Is that the princess? Yes, nice. Let's go. Yes, let's go. Leave what? the, leave the third coffin, let's go. Come on, now. What are they doing down here? We're helping you get out, so let's go. She looks over at the coffin that you just opened and goes, Nana, where's your crown? <laughs> yeah, pretty much is what I'm getting at, like... We're doing... We're also... We're also... I both got time for this. Jewelry cleaner. Yes, let's leave, quickly. So, um, you all make your way back, and back into the, uh, dungeon area. Idre, you have not heard anything happen since that door banged open. It's been about a minute now, and there's silence, but there was definitely somebody down there, otherwise that door would not have opened. So what I will do is cast, a uh, Expeditious... What is Retreat? it called? Retreat? Yeah. Expeditious Retreat. 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 And start searching. So you can dash as a bonus action? So are you dashing down the stairs through the larder? I'm- I'm moving. I'm grooving. Okay, um, Udios, are you following her? Yeah, he can't dash with a bonus action, but he, he's gonna try to. He's gonna to try and keep up. So I'll say that by the time she gets down to the bottom of the stairs and through the larder, you are going to be about midway through the- going down the stairs. Idre, as you open up the door to the larder, uh, that leads into the dungeons, you see two- or no, three men shuffling their way through the back of the- uh, dungeon, and they are escorting the princess. 
She's not in her normal clothes. She's not in any clothes you've ever seen her in before. She's got a traveling pack with her, but it is 100% her, and you see them taking her. And they are going to slip up and out of the bars before you can so, get into the room. So before that, can I have him cast that pad? What I'm going to say is, uh, first off, I'm sorry I kind of overruled you when I was speaking there. I'll try not to do that. Uh, I've been trying not to. Okay. But um, I'm going to say that she's able to see you, and then you throw up that spell, and you start scrambling out. So, Idre, you see them, and then all of a sudden, there's it's like there's a cloud in here, and the whole room goes foggy. Uh, before he does that, can I do something? Uh, sure. Or I was gonna cast Command on her, and just command her to halt. Uh, she has to make a Wisdom saving throw against my spell save DC. Idre? Okay, No, you're casting it on Idre? Yes, I'm casting it on Idre. Okay, okay. I, I thought for a second you were talking and you were casting an oddity. I was like, that's kind of the opposite of what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no. Well, 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 well. <laughs> I, get, I got you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead and do that. And then, uh, Idre, you go ahead and make me that wisdom saving throw. But yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say make it with advantage because you are dead <laughs> set. You are not letting this girl out of your sight. Cool, because I rolled 13 the first time. Uh, okay. let's roll again. Stay lower, stay lower. Stay lower, stay lower. Stay lower, stay lower. Uh, well, it's only slightly better. I got a 15. A Damn it, you succeed. Yeah, I was going to say, that saves. Ooh, um, that saves. <laughs> so you feel this little uh, compulsion to to stay in your tracks, not move at all. And then you work that out of your head. And you go, I no, she is, I, she is not leaving. And you overpower that. Uh, and while while that little tete-a-tete -tete -tete was going on, I'm gonna say, Udios, you were able to make it to uh, into the larder, and you see this kind of back-and-forth happen. Are you still trying to stay hidden, or are you just trying to... Uh, actually, I'm saying, because she cast Expeditious Retreat, you're gonna be... You're gonna, you're gonna have to be booking it. So you're not gonna be able to try and stay hidden as well. Okay. So, I mean, they don't immediately see you, but they're going... You're Because you're not the primary focus of uh, what they're trying to mm -hmm. do and or stop from happening. Um, so you see this little thing happen. Everybody tell me what's going on. Uh, we'll start with Idre, because you just saw them slip up and out. Uh, I am just... Uh, there's nobody around me, because who is training these guards? Um... <laughs> Other than train, we just kidnapped them, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she would see the three guards in the dungeon, though. Yeah, they're, yeah, think... they're already up and out. They just made their way, like, out of yeah. your line of sight. So, uh... like, if you wanted to stop and untie one of the guards, you would uh, lose track of them. You're oh, no. you're probably going to be... They're worthless. They're nothing to me. They don't work. Damn. For all you know, they're drunk. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but they're tied so... up. So how did they tie themselves up while drunk, though? Uh, well, that's how drunk they were. I'm going to say that uh, you're, yeah, you're just focused on getting to her, so you're probably just going to run across and try and get out and try and follow them, uh, and catch up to them. There's no time to go and get anybody, there's no time to help these guards to help you, there, it's just, it's slapstick at the moment. They're, yeah, they're, they're goners now. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna keep on going until I can get somebody in my line of sight. Alright, so you are able to make it to, cause you, well, dark vision's not that. Um, so go ahead and give me a perception check w or with advantage because you know the dungeon, you've been in here, it's not like you, you're in a place that you don't know totally blind. You, you know this place and you'll be able to feel your way to the end of the cell where they were and get out. Um, Udios, if you're going with, like, if you're following her into the fog cloud, you need to make a, uh, perception check uh, just a regular one. I won't make you do it without this or with disadvantage. Well, thanks for the advantage because one was a three. Uh, so uh, <laughs> nineteen. Okay. Oh shit! Yeah, you you uh, know where it is. You check. know where you are, and you you just yeah perception, and you uh, make your way. You just you just book it straight down, and then make a hard left, and you're in that cell. Um, what was your Zudius? That's a thirteen total. Okay. Um, you're going to, you're not going to make it like as quickly as she is. You're going to lose ground on her. Um, but you're definitely going to be able to, to suss out that you saw where they were and you kind of had like a split second of perception of where they were before it all went foggy. And then you're, you're going to kind of feel your way over to it. Idre, as you climb out that grate, you get out and you notice them 
booking their way around the corner of the castle, like they're headed back towards the plaza. Are is anyone within 120 feet of me? I mean, I might not, be. not the princess, but her captors. Yes. I'm going to say, yeah, they're probably around 60 feet away. Okay. So I'm lobbying a firebolt at one of them. Oh, one, of the, one of the dudes. Risky. Uh, you, one of the guys. Uh, you guys can roll a d3 and pick a number. You, roll and... a d- you rolled a d3. How do I Is roll it... a d3? Uh, just roll a just exclamation point r uh, one uh, space one d3 in the guys nice rolling chat. One is one's uh, the thief. Two is me, and three is Alex's character. Okay. Because yeah, if you oh, hurt me. your goddaughter, you'd be dead. It's me. You shoot me. I was gonna say, go ahead and roll attack, and uh, if you hit, roll damage. Well, you miss. Okay. All right. So you uh, lob this firebolt at him. You're like, I'm gonna try and take at least one of them down so that I'm only chasing two and you you throw it just shy just like uh, uh, a little bit up into the right of where they were and uh, it flies over and hits the the castle wall or the the palace walls and they turn that corner and they keep booking it you are you just running after them now yeah I'm still concentrating I, I have it for 10 minutes so before I'm... we turn the corner can I try to cast sacred flame on her while we're still can 60 I feet away to... can you do it as a reaction no then I'm gonna say no I Never. So she had expeditious retreat, and she was, you know, uh, she's got a bit of a, a head start on you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I said I could cast Snare. I think that takes a minute, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's a minute cast time. Oh, that's a long-ass spell. Oh, never mind. <laughs> just gonna stop and stand there for a minute. Yeah, chasing. <laughs> Somebody cast Command. Stand there for one minute while I set this up. <laughs> stand one round, actually. So. Well, and I'm pretty sure Command's just a one-word thing, so. Yeah. Um, you would need, uh, I think, you good. need suggestion. So, Udios, you uh, kind of hear this poof, poof noise as you make your way to the end. Uh, you pull your way out of the grate at the end of the, or in the last cell, and you see that Plague Doctor uh, sprinting off impossibly fast, turning that corner and heading back to the plaza. Did I see what she was chasing? Or did um, I just barely saw, catch her? Well, you saw the captors uh, before they shot up Fog Wall. Or Fog Cloud. Or Cloud, whatever it was. Cloud. So I would know it's Jenga and Scott? Oh, okay. Yes. I don't know where to do this, but I'm going to cast Fog Cloud again if I can. Since I have another spell slot. Um, okay. Because it just gets them. Wait, never mind. She knows the castle. Never mind. I was get, well, and I was gonna say what was the radius, but that's alright. If you're not, uh, it's a I think it's a twenty foot radius. Okay. Yeah. No, it wouldn't be super helpful. It'd just be like kind of throwing down a smoke bomb, and she'd run through it thing, it before she really. The only one that I have that would work. Um, if you have entangle. Um. Anyway, what yeah. is Udios doing? Yeah, you see her uh, running off and turning that corner. You going after her still yeah he's gonna chase after her and you know as he does i'm he is going to use his invocation of armor of shadows and he's gonna cast mage armor on himself okay so as you're sprinting you kind of do your little uh whatever it would be in my mind i'm seeing you do jutsu signs well i can describe it if you want yeah go ahead so as he's chasing after he's sprinting forth he pulls his wand out draws kind of like a circle in front of him filled with a bunch of a uh, magical symbol symbols and the like, uh, incantation go away miss you range you and as he presses it forward the circle enlarges and as he leaps through it it covers him in these leather bracers around his arm his sandals it mo- morph into like magical leather boots he gains this sturdy vest over his chest and stop it all off he has this nice nice dark flowing cloak around him as he continues to run forward i'm gonna say there's like a a nice purplish hue around these uh pieces of armor that formed around you i like that that. give it a little bit of a magical aura on its own without having to anyways so yeah you run forward you turn that corner you see them all sprinting towards the plaza idre as you are about halfway down the castle wall. They are entering the plaza into the crowd of people. Obviously, there is a bit of commotion after the intruder alert signal happened, and there's people either running away, running into the castle, or just standing put, kind of nonplus, don't know what to do, uh, wondering whether or not the play is going to start happening. You see, there's some people that are even like kind of throwing crap and like being booing and stuff up at the st- up at the stage. Um, Scott, as you guys get up to the corner where you can see the airship you can see that there is a hasty disassembling 
happening to the stage where they are trying to unbelt the stage from the from the airship and fold back up the uh, side of the ship so that you can be prepared for takeoff. You see one guy on the uh, helmsman area flipping switches, trying to get everything back on and before you actually get to the ship because they, they heard the intruder alert thing. They know something's going down. They know they're going to have to get out of there quick. Mm -hmm. And with that, you all, Scott, Cigna, and... Jinga. Yes, you all, all are have... running and jump and grab onto the ladder and you're climbing up onto the deck. Idre, you see this happening. You see them getting onto the airship. You see the airship powering up. Udios, you turn that corner. You see the airship start powering up and you see uh, as Idre leaps from the ground to grab onto the uh, ladder and start climbing it. And as you see her start climbing it, it starts taking off. Are you going to jump and try and grab onto the ship as well? You know, yeah, he, he's going to try. Since this was all pretty quick and it takes, a, like, you know, not a full minute, but it takes a couple of seconds for this thing to get up off the ground and get going, I'm going to say you don't even have to roll for it. And you are, once she, oh. once she throws the legs up over and gets over the railing onto the deck, you also are able to jump just last second and grab the bottom rung of the ladder before the airship finally fully takes off and starts to clear the castle wall. Everybody, you, you hear the crowd like confusedly running and screaming and being like, what's happening? <laughs> and um, the airship takes off and starts flying off over Dusk dust crown you climb your way up onto the deck and there is a tense confirm confrontation happening between scott jenga and idre as signa kind of just sits in the corner playing with uh, a piece of a tassel that is on her cloak God damn it, jenga, what you done now does he say that out loud or is he mumbling that to himself a little bit of both everyone let's just stay calm and let's not do anything hasty Take me out. You're like kidnapping somebody. Take me out and this thing will crash. Dre is furious right now, by the way. She's like, she's still pretty much in attack mode. Like, I feel like we could do this. Like, if the ship blows up, I know she's cursed. She could just fly away. And I have my other means of landing safely. So, I'm gonna, we can gamble this, I think. <laughs> is she saying that out loud? Oh. Is she saying that <laughs> no, out loud? This is out of character. <laughs> Okay, I have like... no control over the transformations. There is a chance I am not going to survive and fly away. <laughs> yeah, it is like full on lycanthropy where she she just it happens. Additionally, we could also yeah. just kill her. I don't I don't know if she's needed to be alive for this bounty, but the bounty is this. I was going to say again, fuck you, Damien. He's going to look at these intruders <laughs> on his ship, like. Now, if you so kindly want to stay on the ship, you're either going to be dungeoned or you're going to help. Take your pick. I will not deal with a fight today. He says this very menacing. Hey, Idre, you, as he says this, Idre and Udios, as, you, as he says this, you kind of look over the edge of the ship and you see at this point you are 150 feet in the air. And you know that if the whole ship turned on you and threw and it became battle, it you would get thrown off and there would be no chance of uh, either tracking them or probably even surviving the fall. I mean, that's at least 15 d6 of damage if you don't have feather fall. I do, though. <laughs> I'm just then uh, say, no harm shall come to your princess. You have my word. Oh, yes. Because your word means so very much to us. What about my word? I think your word is going to... <laughs> you know that doesn't mean a damn thing for five years. What I swear by mother and father that I will not hurt this princess. Who are you people? I was gonna say, you the ugly one is my brother. It. And who are you? We're just some travelers down on our luck. Don't we need the money. Everyone has their reasons for making money. I'm sure even you can be persuaded with a little bit of money. No. Start to pass over the uh, walls of the outer city and are going into open plains area now, uh, crossing over uh, forests, rivers, plains, that sort of stuff. The city is far behind you. That's been, you know, a minute or so since you guys have gotten up here. It's very, it's just a very tense, like, stalemate you find yourself in. That's why it's taking such a long time. As you do that, Jenga, I'm going to have you make me a... Pilot check? No, a dexterity saving throw. And you're going to no. have to beat a DC 30. Oh. I can't physically do that. Okay, then uh, I, I want to give you the thirty, right? Thirty, yep, like I'll, three zero. Yeah, yeah, like three zero. 
I wanted to give you the chance if you could, if and since you can't- If I get a nat 20, do I automatically succeed? This is something that's happening from the gods, so no. Okay, well I got a 19. I know that's not good, but... Yeah, uh, I mean, like, it was it was a tall order. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any way any of us could get a, a 30 at the moment. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm trying to do. It was a dexterity one, but the only reason uh, Jenga's making it is because he's the one at the wheel. So an otherworldly draft begins to blow you way off course, and not only blow you, but propel you way faster and further than you were originally planning to go. Hold on tightly! Uh, yeah, everybody's everybody's just like bracing down and trying to trying their best to just stay on the deck and not get blown off the sides because that's how strong and ridiculous this wind is. And as uh, you pass uh, into a storm cloud, a bunch of lightning striking all around you and giant thunderous booms as as the air currents meet each other. The ship is hit with five bolts of lightning all at once. Two on uh, one on each levitation crystal, because there's four levitation crystals. One on okay. each levitation crystal, and one at the very top of the mast. Um, sorry okay. about your friend Gronch, but he is dead. That killed him. Um, the we ship, all might be dead in a second. <laughs> the ship begins to plummet into this, like, into the depths of this storm cloud. You see more flashes of light around you, and the it comes to a, a screeching halt when you meet a giant bioluminescent forest. You crash into the trees and you uh, all fall onto the deck. The forest is lit up and uh, is like bright blue with uh, purples and pinks and all kinds of other colors. It's, it's bioluminescent and it's just really beautiful. But um, you see every once in a while after like the aftermath, everybody everybody's fine by the way. Nobody has to make any rolls or anything. You all were able to hold on. Magic. So you crash in to the ground. Do you see every once in a while there are thunder, uh, there are lightning strikes that are striking these trees, and uh, they seem like conducting rods where they're storing the energy and then running it along through vines that are draping along all the branches and stuff. And as that happens, Jenga. Or not Jenga, sorry. Uh, Cigna stands up, begins to float, pulls up her left hand, and a bolt of lightning strikes her hand. What? <laughs> it brings no harm whatsoever, and her ring bursts into radiant light, and from the ring, a large strand of words appears above her head. They say, <gasps> When the sun has wept upon the waveless lake, and the mists still steal in with ease, Covened wolves arc their eerie dissonant napes in adoration of the moon and thee. And that's where we'll end our session. Can someone type that, please? <laughs> Jenga, what the fuck did you do? No, no. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it, as this was a huge video project that took a lot of time. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to stick around and continue the story with us. A little peek into the future, but we just recorded episode 10, so there's no shortage of content coming up. I just don't have a schedule for it, as I'm just one guy who is not only creating the story, but then editing all together so that it is an enjoyable and concise experience for everyone. But until the next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, peace out, and we look forward to seeing you again in Etulia.